So in this video, we're going to be talking about heterostructure devices and specifically how to draw their band diagrams. So what is a heterostructure and why do we care? Um, well, heterostructures are used to make everything from LEDs. Uh, they're absolutely essential in things like lasers or any devices relying on quantum wells. Um, Heterostructures also let us make direct tests of quantum mechanics, which is super cool. Uh, and they let us test things that would be incredibly difficult to test any other way. Um, they're ubiquitous in any optoelectronic device. And they're also important when you want to grow um, one semiconductor on top of another semiconductor, for example. And you want to know how the, how the two will behave together. So a heterostructure is just some semiconductor. Um, so let's say silicon, for example, joined to some other semiconductor, for example, germanium. So it's just you're fusing the two together. And you might do that by growth. You might do that in, in a variety of ways. Um, and so today we're going to figure out how to analyze and draw their band diagrams. Because band diagrams are an incredibly powerful tool that tell us just about everything we need to know about the semiconductor. So. Let's just start out by drawing two semiconductor um, band structures independent of each other. So let's say that we've got one semiconductor. Uh, let's call this guy semiconductor one on the left-hand side. And let's say we've got some semiconductor, semiconductor two on the right-hand side. And so semiconductor one is gonna have some electron affinity and strictly speaking we should be writing q times the electron affinity to give us the energy but this is my shorthand notation so that i don't go insane with symbols and uh, and you don't as well uh, and we've also got some band gap uh, eg1 and uh let's we, we've got some fermi level in the device let's initially say i don't know maybe the fermi level is down there maybe it's let's just say it's up here uh let's say that this is EF1. And so this is just this semiconductor one, whatever it is, probably silicon or germanium or gallium arsenide or some other common semiconductor. Um, and now let's look at semiconductor two. So let's say that this guy has some electron affinity. And let's say that it's different from the first one. And it's also got some band gap. Let's say that band gap is also different. Let's say that it's smaller. And this guy is also going to have some Fermi level. I don't know uh, where do we want to put it. Um, why don't we initially put it at the same exact place as the Fermi level of the, uh, of the first structure. So let's say their Fermi levels are, are constant. And clearly this is not going to be true in general. Um, but this is going to let us figure out piece by piece how to draw the band structure for these two semiconductors. So now what happens when we put these two semiconductors together? Well, we just draw out the Fermi levels uh, and we see that the Fermi level, EF, is already constant. So we don't have any band bending. We don't need to worry about that in this structure. We just need to draw out all the bands. And let's say that the junction is here at this location of the dotted line. So We've got some electron affinity in the first device, some electron affinity in the second device, and those are true right up to the junction for each device. So what we get are these discontinuities. We actually get some delta EC, let's call it, because it's a discontinuity in the conduction band, and some delta EV. And in general, these aren't going to be the same, right? They're going to depend on what all the what all the parameters of the semiconductor are going to be. And so you might say, well, what what are these values? What is delta EC and what is delta EV? Well, uh, delta EC is just this length, so this l distance to the conduction band minus this distance to the other conduction band. So it's literally just the difference. Um, between the two electron affinities. And let's say that delta EC here is going to be negative because we are dipping down from one band to the other. So chi1 minus chi2 is going to be a negative quantity. Um, and so it's just the difference between electron affinities of the two semiconductors. 
Now what about Delta EV? Well, that's a little more complicated, but not, not hugely so. Um, we can also just do that with distances. So it's just the distance to one of the valence bands minus the distance to the other valence band. So what's the, what's the distance to the first valence band? Well, uh, that's just chi one. So this distance plus this one, chi one plus eg one. And then we need to subtract this length, chi two plus eg two. And so we get a super simple expression for the discontinuity in the valence band. It's just the difference in electron affinities plus the difference in the band gaps. That's cool. And so as we've drawn it here, delta EC is this negative quantity. So it might be like minus, I don't know, 0.2 EV. And delta EV is some positive quantity because we are going up in the, uh, in the valence band. We've got some positive discontinuity. And so this is some value, maybe plus 0.1 EV as it's been drawn here. And now you might rightly say, well, Jordan, that's great and all, but I know that two semiconductors, when I bring them together, are almost never going to have the same exact Fermi level. So what happens when the two are different? Um, and that's a great question. And that's, uh, let's, let's try and figure that out. So let's imagine that our first semiconductor, let's say that it has a Fermi level uh, near, the, near the valence band. So before we bring the two semiconductors into contact, it's got some Fermi level down here. And let's say that our second semiconductor, let's say that, well, let, let's keep the Fermi level in the same place. Let's say it has some Fermi level up here. And so now there's a difference between the two Fermi levels. There's this, uh, there's this gap between the two. And we know what's gonna happen if this were a PN junction. So if this were a PN junction and we had, let's just draw out the whole thing as one, um, one device, so EC, EV, and let's say that we've got EF down here on one side and EF up here on the other side. We know that electrons are gonna diffuse from the N side of the semiconductor. So this is N, this is the P side. And holes are gonna diffuse on, from the left to the right. And this is gonna to lead to a depletion region forming, which is gonna cause these bands to bend. And so the same exact thing is gonna happen. So EC and EV, and I've omitted the vacuum level. And now the Fermi level is constant. So the device is equi in equilibrium. And so the same exact thing is gonna happen in this heterostructure device. These bands are going to bend. So electrons are gonna diffuse from the right-hand side to the left-hand side. And so what does that look like? Well, we know that we need to drag this Fermi level up a little bit. We need to drag this Fermi level down a little bit until they meet, until they're in equilibrium. So let's draw what that might look like. Let me just erase all this real quick. So let's draw what that might look like. So if we've got our vacuum level, we know that our vacuum level is gonna bend with the rest of the semiconductor. Um, so it's the, if you want to look at the band bending, you can just look at the vacuum level because it has to be continuous. So the vacuum level we know is gonna bend, which, which direction is gonna bend? We need to drag this left-hand side up. We need to drag the right-hand side down. So we're gonna have some band bending like this. And we know our conduction band is some distance chi one. And which, which one was greater? Uh, chi one was smaller than chi two. So we're gonna have some chi one and some chi two. And then, so our conduction band starts to bend, starts to bend, and then we hit this discontinuity. And then we hit this drop. So, we're gonna drop a little bit and then we're gonna continue bending, bending, bending until we finish. And let me draw that so it's a little more, a little more pronounced discontinuity. And this is the same distance as before delta EC because band bending isn't gonna introduce any discontinuities. 
it's a sort of continuous process. So we'd expect the discontinuities to be the same as they were before. And I've, I realize I've drawn it a little larger. Um, so let me, let me just fix that. So it's going to be the same exact height as it was before. And chi 2 is still going to be larger than chi 1. And so our band gap, which we, or our, our valence band, similarly is going to bend a little bit and bend a little bit. But then we had a positive discontinuity, so we need to go up a little bit. So we've got this positive discontinuity, and then it starts to bend. And then that's our valence band. So conduction band, valence band, and then the Fermi level is constant throughout the entire device. And so this is kind of interesting. This looks almost exactly, let me smooth this out a little bit. This looks almost exactly like our PN junction band diagram, except we've got this these ugly discontinuities here, uh, delta EC and delta EV. And we know their values. Uh, delta EC, we just said, was the difference in electron affinities. And delta EV is just the difference in electron affinities plus the difference in the two band gaps. Now, the last thing, what's the total amount of band bending? Well, we said that the, the band bending is caused by these two Fermi levels being different, by EF1 being different from EF2. So just as in the case of the PN junction, um, the total amount of band bending is just the difference between the fer two Fermi levels. And so that's kind of cool. So this whole structure is almost identical to that of the PN junction. Now you might ask, well, how much band bending is on this side? And how much band bending is on this side? And that's an interesting question. And that's going to depend on the relative Fermi levels of each of the two devices, or equivalently the, the dopings, NA and ND. It's also going to depend on the permittivity of the two different sides. If So the permittivities could be different, because these are two different semiconductors. And in the derivation of the depletion width, we needed to use the permittivities. So we're going to go over in a future video what those distances actually are. But this is how you draw a heterostructure. This is how you draw a heterojunction. And we can use this now to make interesting devices. So in the next videos, uh, I'm going to be talking about how to use these to make a quantum well, uh, a quantum well device. So if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them down below. And thanks for watching.